Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 13th of June. Indian opposition leader Rahul Gandhi questioned in money laundering probe amid protest. Global terror financing watchdog FATF to decide Pakistan's fate this week. And Nepal Prime Minister Deobar's US visit in July kicks up a row. And now for all the details, India's main opposition Congress party leader Rahul Gandhi on Monday appeared before the Enforcement Directorate for questioning in the National Herald money laundering case amid massive countrywide protest by his party's senior leaders and thousands of workers. Rahul Gandhi and his mother Congress President Sonia Gandhi have been accused of forming a shell company and illegally gaining control of property worth 300 million US dollars. India's Financial Crime Fighting Agency Enforcement Directorate on Monday summoned main opposition Congress party leader Rahul Gandhi of the Nehru Gandhi dynasty as it investigates a nine-year-old complaint of money laundering by a lawmaker of ruling Bharti Janta Party or BJP. Chaotic scenes were witnessed as several senior leaders and workers of the Congress party held protests in capital New Delhi and other major cities against the summoning. They termed it as a misuse of the Central Investigative Agencies by the BJP to silence the voice of the opposition. Some of them were also detained by police. Rahul Gandhi and his mother, Congress President Sonia Gandhi, who is hospitalized due to COVID-related issues, have been accused of forming a shell company and illegally gaining control of properties worth 300 million US dollars. The assets in question had belonged to a firm that published the National Herald newspaper founded in 1937 by India's first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, who was Rahul Gandhi's great-grandfather. Union Minister and BJP leader Smriti Rani said Congress leaders have taken to the streets to pressurize the investigating agency openly because their corruption has been exposed. It's an attempt to protect the assets of the Gandhi family, she said. This is not a drive to protect democracy. This intended drive is to protect 2,000 crores of the Gandhi family. Congress ruled for decades after its founders led India to independence in 1947 from British colonial rule. But its fortunes have declined precipitously since the BJP easily defeated it in the general elections of 2014 and 2019. And a senior police official has claimed at least 100 terrorists have been neutralized in India's Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir this year. This comes after four terrorists, two of whom were involved in killings of policemen, were gunned down in separate encounters in Kashmir Valley on Sunday. The Kashmir Valley has witnessed a spate in violence with over a dozen targeted killings by terrorists in the past two months. At least 100 terrorists have been neutralized in India's Jammu and Kashmir this year, the police in the Union Territory has claimed. In the latest anti-terror operations in the region, which has seen a spate in violence in recent days, Adil Pare, a wanted terrorist of Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba or LET terror group, involved in the killing of two policemen, was gunned down in Srinagar district on Sunday. Meanwhile, three other LET terrorists were also neutralized in a separate encounter in Pulwama district on Sunday. More than a dozen people, mostly non-Muslims and cops, have been shot dead by terrorists in the Kashmir Valley in the past two months. So, Adil Pare ka mar jana, senior police ke liye kamay vik baat hai. Sir, alab is saal abhi tak kitni terrorist maare gaye abhi tak? Abhi tak mein 100 maara. India has long blamed Pakistan supports militancy in the Kashmir Valley. Islamabad, however, denies the charge, saying 
it only provides diplomatic and moral support to the Kashmiri people. Well, moving on in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has said that the budget for next fiscal year represents improvements in many ways as it is better than the budgets of the previous PTI-led government. Meanwhile, PTI chairman and former Prime Minister Imran Khan has claimed that it is impossible for the incumbent coalition government to win the next elections, as its policies have made the prospect of campaigning a Herculean task. Pakistan's newly elected Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif on Sunday said on Twitter that the federal budget for the next fiscal year 2022-23 represents a significant improvement in several ways as it is far better than the budgets of the previous PTI-led government. He said that the budget has provided more educational opportunities for the youth and targeted subsidies for financially weaker people. The Pakistan government unveiled a 47.12 billion US dollar budget last Friday, aiming a 5% growth amid strict conditions laid forth by the International Monetary Fund (IMF) for the revival of the $6 billion loan program stalled for months over policy breaches. Meanwhile, PTI chairman and former Prime Minister Imran Khan on Sunday in an interview claimed that it is impossible for the incumbent coalition government to win the next elections as its policies have made the prospect of campaigning a Herculean task. Khan said that the budget seems to be not for a period of a year but for one or two months. The nation of 220 million people is facing a balance of payments crisis and a widening current account deficit. The foreign reserves have reached 9.2 billion US dollars, hardly enough for 45 days of imports. One of the key steps towards meeting the IMF's conditions, the removal of costly fuel subsidies, has already been implemented by the government, with fuel prices being raised by 40 percent, a move that has sparked anger amongst the common public. And more on news from Pakistan, global money laundering and terrorist financing watchdog FATF Financial Action Task Force will hold a meeting in Berlin from June 14th to 17th where the fate of Pakistan will be decided as the country continues to remain on the watchdog's grey list for failing to check terror financing. The outcomes of the FATF plenary will be published on Friday. Pakistan has been on the Paris-based FATF's grey list for deficiencies in its counter-terror financing and anti-money laundering regime since June 2018. In June 2021, the country was given three months to fulfill the remaining conditions by October. However, it was retained on grey list for failing to effectively implement the global FATF standards and over its lack of progress on investigation and prosecution of senior leaders and commanders of UN-designated terror groups. According to FATF President, Pakistan will remain on the grey list till it addresses all items on the original action plan agreed to in June 2018, as well as all items on a parallel action plan handed out by the watchdog's regional partner, the Asia-Pacific Group in 2019. Moving on, pensioners in Pakistan administered Kashmir recently staged a demonstration to demand a 10% raise in their pensions which was promised by the government in April. They said it has become difficult for them to survive amid the soaring inflation while the Pakistani establishment has remained apathetic towards their plight. Pensioners in Pakistan administered Kashmir held a protest recently against the skyrocketing inflation and lamented the government has failed to provide them the promised 10% raise in their pensions despite a notification in April. The protesters in the illegally occupied region claimed they have been unable to meet ends as prices of all essential commodities have risen in recent months. They said that their demand should be heard and their pension amount should be increased in proportion to the inflation. हर महंगाई जो है वो 200 फीसद से बढ़कर 500 फीसद पहुंच गई है लेकिन मलाजमीन की तनखों में कोई अजाफा नहीं हुआ हम पूरे पेंशनरों की पेंशन में कोई अजाफा नहीं हुआ और कुमार पाकिस्तान ने जो हमें 10 परसेंट अप्रैल में दिया था उसका नोटिफिकेशन भी आज तक वो कुमार नहीं कर रही है The protesters accused the Pakistan establishment of being apathetic towards their plight. They blamed instead of providing aid to the people in the already backward region, economic losses faced by Pakistan due to policy paralysis are also compensated from regions under its illegal control. 
Well, in news from Nepal, Nepali Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Diobai is expected to embark on a visit to the United States mid-July, a first official visit by Premier in two decades. At the Parliament on Sunday, opposition CPN UML's Pradeep Kumar Gyavali questioned Diobai's purpose and demanded he immediately clarify his impending visit. Pradeep Kumar Gyavali, spokesperson of Nepal's opposition CPN-UML, Communist Party of Nepal Unified Marxist-Leninist on Sunday, demanded Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Dioba immediately inform the parliament about his impending visit to the United States. PM Dioba will be embarking on a visit to Washington mid-July, the first by a Nepali Prime Minister in two decades. The former foreign minister also questioned whether PM or the defense minister is paying for the visit. A few days ago, CPN Maoist Center Chief Vip De Prasad Gurung had sought cancellation of PM's U.S. visit, citing that Washington has been trying to drag Nepal into its security alliance, particularly the Indo-Pacific strategy. Over the last seven decades, ties between the two countries have been steady. However, in February, a 500 million U.S. government aid grant, MCC, Millennium Challenge Corporation Nepal Compact, to upgrade Nepal's infrastructure kicked up a storm in capital Kathmandu, and protests were witnessed on the streets. Major political parties were divided over whether to accept U.S. grant as many were wary of U.S. influence in the region. Nepal's parliament later ratified the MCC, to which Washington responded that relation with Nepal is broader than one agreement and that it will continue to support Nepal in its long-term economic prosperity. And in what looks like a dream in the woods, a septuagenarian in central India has a collection of around 650 clocks, with some being over 200 years old. Anil Bhalla has preserved and taken forward the legacy of his grandfather of collecting antique clocks. Septua Janarian Anil Bhalla, who hails from India's central Indore city, has preserved and taken forward the legacy of his grandfather of collecting antique clocks. The love for antique clocks has lasted for three generations in Bhalla's family, and he started collecting them in his childhood after drawing the inspiration from his father and grandfather and now has a collection of more than 600 antique clocks. Most of the clocks in his collection are handmade and do not have a copy. Approximately 615. And the is that this duplicate piece is not more than it is handmade. So the other piece will not be equivalent. You will get some difference. What started as an interest has now turned into his passion, with Bhalla taking out time to study the clocks despite his poor health. Bhalla wants his future generation to continue with his collection. In 2013, he was also featured in the Limca Book of World Records for Antique and one of the largest collections of clocks in India. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Indian opposition leader Rahul Gandhi questioned in money laundering probe amid protest. Global terror financing watchdog FATF to decide Pakistan's fate this week. And Nepal Prime Minister Diobar's US visit in July kicks up a row. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.